Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a kind of product review slash introduction. These are the Madewell Strength Deadlift Attachments. The Sparta Strongman has a lot of unique lifts. One of those lifts that is hailed back all the way to like the Hummer Tire Deadlift or other special deadlift implements has been a longer and whippier bar than normal with lots of weight and lots of spectacle. Not only is Strongman supposed to be the testing of your strength, it's also supposed to be fun to watch, which is why we have these type of implements in the sport. Now in 2016, Rogue decided that they were going to make the Elephant Bar. And the Elephant Bar was a 10 foot long bar. It had a lot of whip. It had a lot of hype as well. And when they introduced it at the Arnold Strongman Classic, it was awesome to watch some of the heavy loads that got lifted by people like Eddie Hall, Brian Shaw, and of course, Hafthor Bjornsson. Rogue has decided that they're basically just not going to make an elephant bar, which is fine, but in its place, what Arsenal Strength did, which is a U.S. Air Force veteran-owned company, is he came in and he designed what's called the Mammoth Bar. Now, the Mammoth Bar shares a lot of the same specs. It's over 10 feet long, it has long loadable sleeves, and it's capable of some very heavy loads. One of the things that Marcus Moss and the folks over at Arsenal Strength decided to do was they were going to market and sell their Mammoth Bar so that people that have gyms can purchase them so that people could either host competitions where the mammoth bar is used or so people could train for an event. Now, one of the only issues with having the mammoth bar available to purchase is one, it costs $850 if you can find it in stock, which it is very rarely in stock, or at least as of late, as of the recording of this video in July, 2022. The other issue is that it is 10 feet long. So for commercial gyms or strongman gyms that are out there, it might be really easy for them to store that bar. But for people like me in a garage gym, although I in my 12 by 20 foot space could store the bar, it would take up a very long amount of space. Now for that reason, it's just kind of my opinion that the Mammoth Bar doesn't make sense for most garage gym owners. Now for a commercial gym, it might make tons of sense, especially if you focus on strongman and powerlifting, but for most garage gym guys, I really don't feel like it makes sense. Enter Doug Madewell and Madewell Strength Equipment. Now the reason that Doug decided to develop these deadlift attachments is because he couldn't get a Mammoth Bar into his gym that he trains at. He had a big Mammoth Bar pole coming up with the clash and all of the competitions that he does because one of the really cool things about Madewell strength equipment is that Doug is in fact a pro strongman. What he came up with was actually pretty ingenious. He came up with a couple of attachments for any barbell that has two inch sleeves. And what it does is it bumps out the weight a little bit further from the center of the bar. And the farther out from the center of the bar your weight is loaded, the more whip you get out of the bar, which really does a good job of replicating the elephant bar and the mammoth bar. So there's four main parts to this. You have the outer sleeve, and I'm calling it the outer sleeve because you slip it over the barbell sleeve. You have the two welded nuts and of course the two bolts. And what these do is they hold the outer sleeve to the barbell sleeve. And then on the other end, you have this about two inch solid thick piece of bar stock, which is where you actually load your plates. What you end up getting out of this is a total loadable sleeve length of about 13 and three quarter inches, which means that you can load this to over a thousand pounds as long as you're using thin enough plates. And then you end up with about 13 inches where it contacts the sleeve itself. The actual portion where you load the weights extends about three inches into this outer sleeve, and then it has a really nice weld going around the outside. As far as its longevity, because it slips inside the sleeve, I don't think that there's gonna be much issue with this coming apart. So here's what these things do really well. Now in April of this year, in 2022, I had a competition over in West Virginia that had a mammoth bar. I reached out to Doug Madewell, and I was very interested in trying out his sleeves. He brought a set by for me to test out, and these are the sleeves that I test. What I can tell you is that if we were to put these things side by side and you were to pull on a mammoth bar and then pull on a standard powerlifting bar, so a 29 millimeter aggressively neural powerlifting bar, in my opinion, there's a lot of similarities between those two bars. I did test this on a 27 millimeter deadlift bar. It was the Rogue Ohio deadlift bar. And although it did whip a whole bunch, 
What I found from doing a side-by-side -side comparison after I competed in April of 2022 was that the powerlifting bar is the best specced out to match the Mammoth bar. Additionally, it whips about the same amount as the Mammoth bar with the deadlift attachments attached to a power bar. And the diameter and the aggressive neural are the two other bits with the Mammoth bar that it just it's really, really close. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing bad about these things. One of the issues that I think uh, kind of makes me nervous about using them is that these two nuts, when you screw them in basically to hold them onto the barbell, they can create a little bit of scuffing on the barbell sleeve. Now, I used a wrench to put these things on because if you don't use a wrench, uh, what you'll find is that as you deadlift, they just slowly work their way off of the barbell sleeve. So if you wrench them down, you do get a little bit of a mark on the sleeve, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't actually think it matters that much unless cosmetics are super important to you. Another thing that I would be concerned about is the lifetime warranty that comes with a lot of made in USA barbells. I would imagine that the extreme amount of whip that these things help the bar experience and that isn't something that they necessarily thought that the bar would have to do when they designed it if they were to find out that your bar bent or your bar somehow needed to be serviced with a lifetime warranty but they see that you were using these I think there might be an issue with lifetime warranties being honored. Now I do have a couple of improvement recommendations. One of them is to attach a rod to the actual end of the bolt here. And what I mean is basically taking the bolt that comes standard that goes through the nut and attaches to the sleeve and just adding it so that it's basically like a little T-handle, if you will. You find this a lot on yokes when they have the uprights and you can tighten the cross member so it takes the slop out of it. And what you do by using this is you eliminate the need of a wrench to be used when you're actually putting this thing onto a barbell. So now, instead of having to use a wrench like you would on this bolt here, you can just tighten it down using your hands and you got the little T-handle right there. It would just make it a lot easier to use in the gym. The second thing, and I really don't know if there's any way to do this that's affordable and actually reasonable as far as these things are concerned, but if there was a way to somehow soften the blow of this bolt, contacting the sleeve inside of this sleeve and uh, you know causing that marring. Now it is, like I said earlier, a very little deal and I actually don't particularly care. Uh, not that I don't care for my barbells, however, I do think that equipment should be used and in the sport that I compete in, having something like this could be considered vital if you have that coming up in a competition. But outside of that, there's really nothing about these that could really be improved. They function incredibly well for what they were designed to do, and in my opinion, are a huge benefit to those of you that may be competing with a mammoth bar in your future, or if you're just looking for variation and want to have a little bit of fun. Here's the bottom line. These, the Madewell Strength Deadlift Attachments, I think that they're a ton of fun to have. I personally thought that it was really good to be able to try out what a super whippy 10 foot long bar feels like before I entered into a competition where I had to pull a max single attempt on one, and having them in the train up to that event was not necessarily crucial, but it was a benefit. Benefit. The other part of this is that these are just really fun to use. So if you have people that visit your gym at all and they want to try to pull on them, it is actually a lot of fun. Now who shouldn't buy these? Uh, so if you are looking to build the foundations of your gym, these are probably not something to get. These are something to save for down the road. Also, if you are an OCD person that all of your stuff has to be perfect, immaculate, everything in your gym is clean, just stay away. You don't want these, trust me, these things will stress you out. I don't think you'll ever use them. But if you're someone that maybe has a gym established and maybe you're either in Strongman or interested in trying Strongman out, this could be a really awesome tool for you to have in your arsenal. The last thing that I'll say about these things is that the cost is really low impact for most people's garage gyms if they're already established and looking to just add some variety. At $250 with shipping included, I think you'd be hard pressed to find something else that offers this variation for that price point. Keeping in mind that if you bought the Arsenal Strength Mammoth Bar, you'd be spending $850 plus the shipping and it's a 10 foot long bar. So trust me, it's not gonna be cheap. If you're interested, go ahead and check the link out below. Additionally, uh, he has other equipment. Everything's made here in Ohio and USA. But that's been it for this review. I appreciate you guys watching. And remember, when it comes to your garage gym, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next time. Let's go, Kurt. Big pull. Come on. Go, Kurt.
Pull, pull, pull. Nice. Go, Kurt. Pull, pull, pull. Nice, nice.